I don't think people realize how good this guy was last year. He was the number one targeted tight end in the red zone and no one's talking about it. What are we talking about here? If you're waiting till week one for fantasy football to start, you are already behind. The mental warfare, the grind set has already started. And in today's video, I'm bringing you 10 names that you should go trade for now, buy low before the NFL season starts and take advantage of your league mates. The first name is Josh Jacobs. We have been loving Josh Jacobs all off season on this channel. The main reason I think the fantasy community has been lower on him is because Matt LaFleur really likes to rotate his running backs historically, which technically is true. In the last four years, no running back averaged over 50% of the team's rushing attempts. However, LaFleur might be left with literally no option other than force feeding Josh Jacobs. Why? AJ Dillon is gone. He's on season ending IR. Their rookie running back Marshawn Lloyd that they like has already had two hamstring injuries and he will not be available to start the season. So realistically, LaFleur might be forced to feed Josh Jacobs. And let's not forget how damn good Josh Jacobs has been to start his fantasy career. In his first five years, he's been the definition of consistency, averaging a career top 12 in fantasy points per game while typically being on one of the league's bottom half offenses in the NFL. All right, and every time his team finished top 15 in offensive points per game, he was a top 12 points per game finisher in fantasy football. And now he gets to join the Green Bay Packers. It's the best offense he's ever been on. Jordan Love, Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Dontavion Wicks, that tight end duo, how many red zone trips will this offense have? How many opportunities will Josh Jacobs have to score a touchdown this year? I think he's guaranteed to get double digit touchdowns on the ground. I want to tear down from the following names if I can. We're gonna try and do a two for two deal and improve our team elsewhere. Can I tear down from Kyron Williams? Maybe not with the news now, but try it. Can I tear down from Jonathan Taylor? I think you can. Can I tear down from Isaiah Pacheco? In ESPN, you definitely can. And I want to drastically improve at a, at a different position. Quarterback, wide receiver, tight end. Here's some real trades that went down. On the Flock Fantasy website, we have access to real trades that go down in ESPN, Yahoo, and Sleeper Leagues. So in a one quarterback start eight league, PPR, someone got Josh Jacobs and Nico Collins. They sent away Jaden Reed and Jonathan Taylor. Mwah. Chef's kiss, beautiful. That's exactly what we want to do. Upgrading at wide receiver. Another perfect example of this, which happened 14 days ago, someone got Josh Jacobs and Justin Jefferson. They sent away Debo Samuel and Jonathan Taylor. Perfect. We upgrade from Debo to Justin Jefferson. That's the kind of deals we want to get done. The second player you should go trade for, and I have been talking this guy up all offseason, is Brian Thomas Jr. I am way higher on him than the consensus websites. Brian is well ahead of schedule for your average rookie wide receiver. Like, what do I mean by that? Well, he's already a starter for this team. If you look at the Jaguars starters, how they were utilized in the preseason and their snap share, Gabe Davis played 100%. We know he's a starter in two wide receiver sets, but Brian Thomas, rookie wide receiver Brian Thomas, already in preseason week one to three, played 88% of the snaps for the starters for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Christian Kirk is not playing in two wide receiver sets. 88% of the target share for a rookie wide receiver is typically what you're seeing from the good ones after the team's bye week mid-season, he's already that dude. And this team has a glaring hole at wide receiver. Remember, they lost Calvin Ridley, Zay Jones, Jamal Agnew. The Jags have the fifth most vacated targets heading into the year. Over 40% of their target share from last year is up for grabs. And guys, they had 18 targets available inside the 10-yard line this year. If you look last year, Calvin Ridley was third in red zone targets amongst wide receivers. And that is gone. Calvin is no longer there. Where are those sweet red zone targets going to go? I think they're going to they're gonna go to the new sexy name in Brian Thomas Jr. And we see round one rookie wide receivers constantly beat their ADP in fantasy football. Look at guys who have done it in the past five years. A huge list. Chase, Jefferson, Waddle, Wilson, Lamb, Alave, Flowers, Ayuk, and Hollywood Brown. By the way, he was the seventh rookie wide receiver drafted in fantasy football drafts this year, but he was the fourth drafted wide receiver in the NFL draft. The NFL, like these NFL teams, 
put a higher emphasis on Brian Thomas than you guys are in fantasy football. I would not be shocked at all if Brian Thomas is a top 15 surprise finish this year. It wouldn't surprise me. Maybe it surprises the rest of the world. We want to trade away the following names to acquire Brian Thomas. Hollywood Brown, Jordan Addison, DeAndre Hopkins, Keenan Allen, Jamison Williams, and Cortland Sutton. Those are all ADP adjacent options. All right. Another running back we want to go buy, and we were drafting him everywhere for zero RB teams, Jerome Ford. We were not Nick Chubb people. We got roasted for it, but I think people might understand now. Nick Chubb was placed on the pup list to start the season. At minimum, he's going to miss four games. His knee injury was as bad as it gets. He tore his ACL, the same knee that he tore his ACL all the way back in college. So he's done it twice now, and he also tore his MCL. It was a nasty injury. I don't know when he's really ready to go. And Jerome Ford last year, in replace of Nick Chubb, from weeks 2 to 17, only played 52% of the snaps. But he still had over 16 touches per game, almost 13 and a half points per game, and finishes the RB13 in that span. In that span, he averaged more points per game than Bijan Robinson, DeAndre Swift, and Ramondre Stevenson. If you went zero RB, this is the perfect trade target for you to start your year well. Go trade for Jerome Ford, send low upside players in a trade. Again, these are real trades that have happened because we have access to that database, which is great. Jacoby Myers, perfect. Go get Jerome Ford. Zeke Elliott, perfect. Go get Jerome Ford. Way less competition. All right, a wide receiver you should go trade for before the season, Jackson Smith and Jigba. I know. I know you've been hurt before. I hear you. I too. I too have been hurt before, but this is a new year. All right? The best fantasy players can recognize change from one year to the next, and they can capitalize on that change. There's huge changes in Seattle. Pete Carroll's gone. Mike McDonald's in. Mike McDonald's in, excuse me. Shane Waldron is gone as the offensive coordinator. Ryan Grubb is in. Remember, Ryan Grubb is the former Washington Huskies offensive coordinator, and he has talked about how excited he is to involve Jackson Smith and Jig Jigba in his new offense. Ryan Grubb is the same offensive coordinator that helped Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk, and Jalen McMillan all get drafted before round three in the NFL draft this year. His offense also led to Michael Penix being drafted top 10. Ryan Grubb's offense last year, amongst 130 plus power five schools, was first in passing yards per game, was 12th in passing attempts per game, and was ninth in total touchdowns per game. I heavily anticipate JSN's role growing from year one to year two. And if you look at preseason, JSN was a starter in even two personnel, all right? Week one, he played 91% of the snaps with the starters. In week three, he played 100% of the snaps with the starters. Now, to be fair, Tyler Lockett has been dealing with an injury, but I believe, and I'm projecting for JSN to overtake Tyler Lockett in two wide receiver sets. Try and get JSN for some of the following names that are adjacent in ADP. Christian Watson, I'd rather have JSN. Christian Kirk, Keenan Allen, Jordan Addison, and DeAndre Hopkins. All right, here's a tight end that you should trade for. If you missed out on one of the top names, Jake Ferguson. Fergie is about to go nuclear in 2024. I don't think people realize how good this guy was last year. He was the number one targeted tight end in the red zone, and no one's talking about it. Dak Prescott loved finding Jake Ferguson when it was time to score a touchdown. In fact, he was the only tight end in 2023 with over 20 red zone targets. No other tight end had 20 red zone targets. Jake Ferguson, number one with 23. Travis Kelsey, number two with 19. I mean, what are we talking about here? This is the offense that scored the most points per game last year. And outside of CeeDee Lamb, this is the weakest wide receiver room there is in the NFL. Here's some examples. Again, trade low ceiling players to get a reliable starting tight end like Chuba Hubbard, who I love. But Jake Ferguson means more to me in that onesie position. Devin Singletary, give me Jake Ferguson. All right, how about Deontay Johnson? Go trade for him. Last year, this team had a wide receiver finish top 17. His name was Adam Thielen. All right, Adam Thielen averaged 13.6 PPR points per game on eight targets per game. And I view Deontay Johnson as an upgraded version of Adam Thielen. In Deontay's first five years in the league, he averaged 8.3 targets per game across every single game in his entire career, and you got people sometimes saying, well, they had to target him. Stop it. That's nonsense. Targets are earned. We know that in the NFL, and Deontay earned those targets. And I know people are going to comment and say, Bryce Young sucks. Let's talk about that. 
What if I told you in the last decade, 10 years, just 29.2% of rookie quarterbacks were able to support a top 24 wide receiver finish in fantasy football? Bryce Young is part of that select 29%. He is one of seven quarterbacks in the last decade to support a top 24 finish. And now he's got Dave Canales as his head coach, the quarterback whisperer. In 2022, Dave Canales helps Geno Smith turn his career around. In 2023, he helps Baker Mayfield turn his career around. And now in 2024, everything the Panthers have done this offseason has been to improve Bryce Young's game. And Deontay Johnson was a huge, huge part of that. This team is sneaky. Don't sleep on their wide receiver one. Okay, here's a quarterback that I think has sneaky quarterback one overall finish upside. That's Kyler Murray. The fantasy community cannot stop sleeping on Kyler Murray. No matter what he does, they continue to sleep, and I don't get it. Last year, coming off a torn ACL with no Hollywood Brown for most of the season, on a dysfunctional team, Kyler scored more fantasy points per game than C.J. Stroud, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Jared Goff, and Tua Tags, and still outscored everyone's favorite fantasy quarterback in C.J. Stroud, who had Nico Collins for the entire season, and still Kyler Murray was able to outscore him, often torn ACL with Michael Wilson as his wide receiver one. And... Kyler Murray just added Marvin Harrison Jr. In fact, CJ Stroud's 18.7 points per game last year would be Kyler Murray's worst points per game season in the last four years. Why are we sleeping on Kyler Murray? His situation has drastically improved. If he scored 18.9 points per game last year and now he adds Marvin Harrison Jr., what could this offense do? What could Kyler Murray do? All right, another wide receiver you should go trade for. I've noticed in drafts, this is not a sexy name, so he should be easily acquirable. That is Chris Godwin. Guys, last year was the first time in the last five years that Godwin averaged 60 receiving guards and seven targets per game, but finished outside the top 15 in fantasy points per game. So what happened? Did Godwin fall off? No, I'll tell you exactly what happened. For the first time in the last five years, the Bucs decided to play Chris Godwin as an, as an outside wide receiver. They played him outside 61.6% of the time, which to be honest, makes little to no sense to anyone ever because Godwin has been a dominant slot receiver his entire career. Why change it up? All right. Uh, and that led to his lowest catch percentage in his career at 63.8%. Here's the good news. The Bucks made it extremely clear that they're going to put Chris Godwin back into the slot. So I think we're going to see a bounce back year for Godwin. And if you look at the targets last year, he was right there with Mike Evans. I think some positive regression is on the way. All right, a running back that I am drafting everywhere and you should trade for before week one, Blake Corum. McVay has a history of shuffling through running backs pretty often. He hasn't had a running back with back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons since 2017-2018. He also hasn't had a running back repeat as the team's leading rusher since 2019. Every single year, it's been a different name. And you got to ask the question, how much work, if any, will Blake Corum take straight away? With the report coming out, McVay saying he's going to use Kyron Williams as a punt returner. Does that suggest to us that Corum already has a bunch of trust with his coaching staff? Does that suggest to us that he already has a larger role than we anticipated if they're willing to put Kyron Williams in harm's way like that? Here's what concerns me about Kyron Williams and why I like Blake Corum. Kyron Williams last year had 12 rushing touchdowns. He only played 12 games. He averaged one rushing touch, touchdown per game. That's great. But here's the problem. Only one of his rushing touchdowns came outside the 10-yard line. Look at it. I, I've literally done the research for you. On average, his rushing touchdowns come from inside the 6-yard line. You got to ask the question, what is Blake Corum's best attribute? I believe, after watching a lot of his film throughout the entire offseason, that he is the best goal line running back college football has seen in the past five years. Don't believe me? Well, what if I told you in the past three years, he has 56 rushing touchdowns and a lot of those coming at the goal line. This is what concerns me. Cora might have the goal line work quicker than people realize. And if Kyron can't stay healthy, then Blake becomes a league winner instantly. And by the way, Kyron Williams has an 88 point 88.7% chance of injury, according to Injury Shark, which is the fourth highest mark in their database. And he's projected to miss 
games, which is the highest amount they've given to any running back. He's an undersized back. If he does miss time, I'm not saying he will, but if he does miss time, Blake Corum will win leagues because Sean McVay has had a top two running back in points per game three out of his last seven years and has had a top 21 running back five out of his last seven years. So go get some Blake Corum. Don't be late on the train. Last player I'm going to tell you to buy, and I think this is the easiest buy before the year, Josh Palmer. The Chargers have the most vacated targets in the NFL this year, meaning they have the most targets that are left behind by previous players. Think about it. Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, Gerald Everett, Mike Williams. Those guys are leaving behind a ton of targets. 395 total targets available. That's 63% of their target share and 24 targets inside the 10 are available. And these chargers, Palmer and McConkey, in my opinion, are the easiest guys to trade for right now because this offense is going to be better than people realize. But last year, Keenan Allen went down with an injury. A lot of people thought Quentin Johnson would step up. He did not. Who stepped up? Josh Palmer. In games without Keenan Allen last year, Josh Palmer averaged 14 points per game. If Josh Palmer averages 14 points per game, he will be a top 24 wide receiver in fantasy football this year. He's already got chemistry with Justin Herbert. He costs you nothing to go trade for. And Jim Harbaugh, as an NFL head coach, has never had a fantasy wide receiver finish below wide receiver 27 on the season. In fact, most years he's had a wide receiver finish top 20. I think McConkie is a guy to own at the second half of the season. But if we're trading right now to go win our games right now, Palmer is the best flex you can go buy. He's the cheapest flex you can go buy. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe if you like the content. Last thing I want to say is if you want some consistent rankings in season that will update every single week, then use the promo code LAND, become a Mother Flocker member, and you will get those rankings every single week. You'll unlock a free team review from myself. I'll tell you exactly how you did in your draft, how to get ahead in your league. You get all the premium tools on the website, and you support the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. All up. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh.